Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Julie Moon, Senior Research Analyst with Finnovate, and today I'm joined by Siri Borsum, Global VP of Huawei. Siri, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for inviting me. Yeah, so today we'll be gathering some insights on Siri's view of digital transformation and what firms can do to keep up in today's environment. So let's get started. Siri, tell us a little bit about your role at Huawei and what you're building there. So I joined about a year and a half ago, uh, building the third global mobile ecosystem. So um, uh, just simply a competitor to um, the Google Play and the, um, the App Store that Apple has. And um, I'm, my responsibility is to build a team um, that will make sure that we have all the financial apps uh, on board um, in our um, mobile ecosystem. So it's uh, it's kind of a it's a big it's a big challenge. Um, it's a big job, and and also it's a very I see it as an extremely important job um, for two reasons. One is that obviously we need competition in the space. Um, I think um, to drive innovation. And we also need um, innovation in order to drive um, financial health. That is something that I think we, we, we as an industry need to do together so that we actually um, can um, get financial health and, and live a sustainable, um, for people to be able to live a sustainable life. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just as, um, as important as physical health to, to know that your, uh, your finances are, are in order. Yeah. And, and in order to do that, you need choice, right? You need a lot of different choices because just as you and I are different, we, we want different solutions and we need different solutions. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's, a, it's very, it's challenging. It's a lot of fun and it's definitely needed. Yeah, and quite a big project as well. Yeah. So let's talk a little Absolutely. bit about yeah. yeah. So the fintech industry in general, how and where did you get your start in the fintech industry? Well, well, that is basically in it is actually when joining Huawei. Um I spent 12 years at Google before that in the um in the tech industry and I I worked um a lot with the with the finance industry, um, so so I got sort of very deep into that. As as um, I was sort of joining from the beginning, like back in two thousand and seven, when we tried to explain to the world how the Google advertising platform worked, mm. and and sort of onboarding the industry into um, into digital and into the digital transformations. So I've been sort of part of that. Um, but the sort of the fintech environment, I, I basically just joined a year and a half ago and got involved in that. Great. So let's rewind um, back to 2007 when you first joined the tech industry. What joined, what inspired you to um, or what drew you into the tech industry in specific? Well, I, I think I was I was working with sales at that point, and um, they were um, the, the Norwegian CEO was building the organization here in Norway. Um, there were already five or six people in the office in the Google office at that time, but very few people knew about this. They they didn't understand what kind of platform um, uh, that Google could offer. So I think that was one of the the things I liked the most, the fact that it was it was something new, it was different, uh, it was a bet. Um, now you kind of think, of course, it wasn't a bet, but at that time, mm -hmm. nobody understood. You had to sort of explain how it was an auction and how you um, there was this uh, this score on relevance and like that basic that we now like almost everyone knows. Um, so so I think that was what really. Um, drew me to and, and and made me accept um it was the fact that it was new it was a bet on something big yeah definitely and it took off for sure so looking back obviously you know things have changed a lot in the tech industry uh from since 2019 
So tell me a little bit about what, in what way the digital transformation narrative has changed since 2019. Are firms still focused on the same goal or have things shifted? I think companies are focusing even more on it. And I I think for the first time, we as consumers have actually followed. Because it's been one of those uh, chicken and the, um, and the egg kind of uh, a scenario because we've all seen it's been possible, but the users haven't sort of joined in um, as much as I think we in the in the industry uh, would have hoped for. So, so I think that has helped. We've kind of been, and unfortunately, we needed a um, pandemic to, to make that happen. But um, I now think that both companies and consumers see the extreme benefit of having uh, better technological tools um, to do their banking. So uh, that is what's changed. I think it's the a lot more focus. Um, and I also think that consumers now know what good customer experience within not just the finance industry, but in within the tech industry in total, like how the apps can help you uh, in your daily lives, mm -hmm. which makes them more demanding than ever before. Um, and when customers are demanding, we need to step up. So, so I think there's this ladder that we're going going to go forward together um, for the next for the next couple of years. Um, and and we also see sort of the it's more about what we have the opportunity we we have now that we didn't have um, five six years ago. That everyone sees how it can contribute. Mm -hmm. So um, by, by by that I mean, you we all have a mobile phone. We're connected twenty four seven. Um, we leave um, data and insights all the time, and we have the the most sort of um, the the greatest technology that we've ever had. And those two three, three things will uh, continue to um, to run sort of uh, or, or drive innovation in any industry, but I think in our industry in particular. Yeah, yeah, so it's more of a change in the, on the consumer side. And that, I guess, leads me to the next question of innovation in the fintech industry, obviously, is changing just at such a rapid pace. What are your recommendations to fintechs and banks to keep up with that pace and consumer expectations now? Uh, start to focus on it. Have a top of mind, not just something you say you want to do, but actually something you are measured on and that everyone in any management group um, or the C-suite talks about all the time. Mm -hmm. They know what KPIs there are. They know uh, the development is not something that is left with the developers um, in sort of on the second floor, if you see what I mean. Um, so, so make sure it's your highest priority, make sure it is measured, but then also don't think you can do it on your own. I, I, I truly believe that this is something we need to do together. Um, and and I am, I'm impressed how the industry from being very um, one bank to another, um, are now coming together and, and we can thank the fintechs for that. that we're now seeing collaboration, partnerships um, in so many different uh, uh, sizes and, and, and versions. Um, so I would, I, would definitely, um, I would definitely focus on that. And then you don't drive innovation without the right culture. So you need to look after your people. You need to make sure they feel safe, that they dare to try new things, that they come to you um, with all the ideas. And also they need information. They need to know what's possible. They need to know uh, what's going on um, in, the, in the company in order to contribute. So, so people um, is definitely very important focus area, I would say. Yeah, definitely. So partnerships and people keep those top of mind for sure. So that leads us to our next question um, of what's next. So obviously we've come a long way in digital transformation. 
Um, what's next for digital transformation? What do you see as the next leap? Well, I've tried to bet on the future many times and uh, I, I'm, I haven't succeeded that many times. I don't think many people do. So for me, it's more, what do we see now? What trends and um, what, what would I wish for as a customer uh, and a consumer? So I think embedded finance obviously is very there and, and we need to see that work uh, truly. Um, uh, everything personal that is more towards me that helps me in my daily uh, economy. Um, in, invite me into areas that I haven't been like um, investing in stocks or, um, uh, or, or um, investing in crypto or, or any things that that you might be uncomfortable with as a consumer. Uh, you're curious, but you don't understand because the, I think as an industry, we have made, there are so many uh, three letter abbreviations and it, it's just made it difficult for the the, the normal person. Like, um, um, so, so that's one. For me personally, um, I would love to see payments disappear, hmm. like totally. Um, that it, it's something that just um, you've made all the decisions beforehand and out of that, um, like if I go and wants to buy, I don't know, a, a, buy a, a car, um, I won't be able to do it because I cannot afford it. Like, like how do we get that help and how does payments disappear if I just go into a store um, and I paid and we, we, we already see these things, uh, we're moving towards it. Mm -hmm. It won't happen straight away, but, um, definitely, I think that's the direction we're going. Um, yeah. 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 That will be cool. But I think you're right. I think we're a ways out, but it is starting to happen. Great. Well, that's all we have time for. Siri, thank you so much for taking the time to share your insights today. We really appreciate it. And thank you, everyone, for watching. This has been Siri Borsum, Global, Global VP of Huawei. Thank you.